Boca Chica is a resort town on the southern coast of the Dominican Republic. Thousands of tourists come each year for its heavenly beaches. Some come in search of sex. Many of the prostitutes who sell their bodies here are minors, and increasingly they're Haitian. After the January earthquake in Haiti, a growing number of young women who lost everything in their homeland began seeking a future here. So many have come in recent months that some young Dominican prostitutes told the Nuevo Herald that their Haitian competitors will soon outnumber them. On these mean streets, hunger made Maria sell her body. She is 12. <laughs> Maria crossed the border in February with her cousins, who are 13 and 10 years old. A hustler, as human traffickers are called here, helped them cross into the Dominican Republic. She says the price was her virginity. The children say they lost their parents and several siblings in the quake that destroyed Port-au-Prince and killed about 300,000 people. Maria was at school when her family was buried under the rubble of their home. Since the earthquake, an average of 1,000 Haitian children like Maria and her cousins leave the country illegally each month in the hands of traffickers. This joint investigation by a Nuevo Herald and the Miami Herald uncovered an appalling trauma that is blatantly ignored by authorities in both countries. Most children are smuggled in the northern region of the island, where the Masakata River marks the border between Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Soldiers and immigration officials from both countries watch the area. So do United Nations Blue Helmets. But it's harder to watch on Mondays and Fridays when a massive open market unfolds in the town of the Habon in the Dominican side. It's attended by thousands of merchants from both countries, and it's in this chaos that traffickers can slip the children through. According to eyewitness accounts by Herald reporters, this wouldn't be possible if the authorities weren't in on it, if they didn't receive bribes. In an August interview, General Francisco José Gil, then director of CESFRONT, the Dominican Border Patrol, denied the accusation. En toda la frontera del mundo se cometen travesuras y diabluras. Y nosotros con mucha responsabilidad, cuando un militar eh, comete una travesura, pues se le aplican los reglamentos internos institucionales. Pero le voy a decir algo. Yo voy a cumplir un año frente al CEFRON y no he tenido que mandar a la justicia ordinaria ningún miembro del CEFRON. After crossing the border, many children end up victims in a network of exploiters, if not of their own relatives who force them to beg for money on the streets. At the end of each day, they must surrender what they've collected in exchange for food or a place to sleep. Some children follow the hustlers into the Dominican Republic for the promise of a better life and work, like 12-year-old Whistlin. Hustlers raped her 13-year-old friend and made Whistlin beg at a street crossing. She immediately realized she'd fallen into a trap. After a few months and with the help of a Haitian woman, she returned to Haiti to live with her mother. But back home, nothing had changed. Her mother still couldn't afford to feed her nine children. Whistlin wound up in the Haitian border town of Wanamin at a shelter for children who were victimized by traffickers. Since the quake, the nuns who run the shelter have been overwhelmed with work. Después del terremoto, la policía de Haití nos ha dicho que un niño haitiano vale 20 mil pesos y para adopción o para entregarlo a alguien y 200 mil pesos para tráfico de órganos. Yo acá en el norte no se ha descubierto que esa característica, pero sí hemos descubierto que es para llevarlas a pedir o para llevarlas a hacer otras cosas que son de vida, porque no van a de sus hogares. 
A report this year by the U.S. State Department concluded that the Dominican government is not making significant efforts to prevent the trafficking of minors. For these children, it's a challenge to simply survive. In August, Maria found a place where she and her cousins could sleep. Viola Mateo, who owns this home, says she's doing the three children a favor, but that she can't give them more. Maria and her cousins still spend their days on the streets. She no longer prostitutes herself, but sells hard-boiled eggs with her cousins. When they're lucky, they sell 30 of the five-cent eggs and make enough for a single meal to share. <laughs> 